الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين أما بعد رب الشحي صلي ويسري أمي وحيد حقاً تمني ساني إفقهم قولي Strictly brothers and sisters in Islam I'd like to first post a small advertisement about this salah the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said that the one who stands with the Imam until he is finished reciting in the masjid until he is done then it is as if he has prayed the entire night. So those of us who are able to last, who have the stamina to make it through the entire 23 raka'at, then bi'ithinillah ta'ala, I'm certain Allah ta'ala will reward us with, with the, uh, the full reward that he promised us that of, of having worship the entire night. So don't think of the extra roughly 50 minutes or so that you would spend um, as another 50 minutes, but rather think of 50 minutes versus the entire rest of the night of worship. So in that hopefully this will motivate all of us to be, to be strong. Uh, there's one more thing that I'd like to mention, and this will be coming in Surah Al-A'raf, which is next. I'd like to ask all of you a question. What is the original sin? Adam alayhi salam. One person said Adam alayhi salam. That's a good guess, because that's the original sin in Christianity. That Adam Islam ate of the fruit of the tree. So technically that is the original sin of mankind. That's the first sin, first mistake committed by a, a human person. Of course, the are Ma'asun, they don't sin. The great first sin in our recorded history is the sin of Shaitan al Rajim. Shaitan committed the first sin when Allah Ta'ala commanded him to bow down to Adam. He said, I won't bow down. Different places in the Quran reveal different parts of shaitan's arrogance. Will I make sajda? Will I bow down to the one who was created of team, of clay? I was created of fire, he was created of clay, shall I bow down to him? The kibr, the arrogance of shaitan. This is the first sin. The arrogance of shaitan, his unwillingness to bow down. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, in a sense, you could reduce all of sin to arrogance. The Prophet ﷺ said that in the moment when you are sinning, in the moment when you are engaged in a sin, whether you are drinking, whether you are committing zina, whatever your sin, in that very moment, in that instant, you're not a Muslim. In that moment, you're not a Muslim. What did the Prophet mean? And I can only speculate, but one possible interpretation that has become clear to me is that in that moment, mankind is selfish. Mankind always tries to do what it thinks is best for itself. In that moment of weakness, mankind a person, myself, when I sin, somehow, for some reason, I think that in that moment, sinning is the right choice as opposed to the command of Allah Ta'ala. In that moment, in that instant, I'm making some sort of decision to sin instead of obeying Allah. So in that decision, I'm claiming that whatever I get from the sin, whatever positive I perceive from the sin, is more important is, has more value than the fact that I've disobeyed Allah Azza wa This is a tremendous thing. And this is a statement of Kufr. And I'll be lying in that. SubhanAllah, I'm not used to So in that moment when you sin and when you assume that one of your needs or one of your desires is more important than the command of Allah Ta'ala, to assume that in that moment that sin is more precious to you than the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is a moment of arrogance. It is the moment when you think that your desire somehow has meaning, somehow has value. Whereas the only thing that has value, the only thing that has meaning, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Wallahi al-Azim, I swear to you by Allah, the only thing that has meaning, that has existence, that has any importance at all, is Allah Ta'ala. And that's the only thing worthy of seeking, is the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. The root of every sin, analyzed that way, could be seen as arrogance. Which is why, a sin is not just a sin. Some people argue about, oh, belief, or is it good works? 
The two are related, my brothers and sisters in Islam. This is not a theological debate amongst the Muslims. A bad work is a lapse in Iman. It's a lapse in faith. Because of that arrogance. And so I ask Allah Ta'ala to protect myself first and foremost from all forms of arrogance. But the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam said that he will not enter the Jannah. He will not enter the gardens. The one who has even so much as an Adam's weight of arrogance in his heart. And I would like to remind us a promise, a true promise, one of the few true promises that you will hear from the promiser. And I will come to them from before them and from behind them, and from their right side and from their left side. And you, addressing Allah Ta'ala, you will not find the majority of them amongst those who are grateful. This was the promise of Shaitan. And while the majority of what he says is lies and deception, at that moment when he is facing Allah Azza wa Jal, and he cannot lie, let it be known that what he spoke is the truth, and he has exerted himself fully and dedicated himself completely to our destruction and our annihilation and our eternal damnation. So let us not take him as a wali when a'udhu billah, and let us not follow in his footsteps when a'udhu billah, but instead let us take Allah as our wali and follow in the footsteps of the Prophet وسلم, as these are our guides to eternal salvation. أقول قولي هذا وأنا سأفر الله لكم لسائر المسلمين فسأفروه إنه المفروحين سبحان الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نسأفروه ونتوب إليه